so you can see the empty looking eyes over here and you can you can compare it over here with the histological diagram so can you appreciate this classical nuclear that is empty looking appearance nuclear feature okay this is a classical feature which is seen in the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid also called as the ground glass appearance orphan any like nucleus or empty looking nucleus the first important nuclear feature the second very important nuclear feature that we can appreciate it over here as i told you they are crowded okay the nucleus is crowded and they have a characteristic up and down appearance and i can prove that okay how i can prove first of all let us see what is this okay so this this, this is basically your empty empty appearance or orphan any i look okay then can you see one nucleus is present over here one nucleus is present here one nucleus is present here so this is the classical crowded or up and down appearance of this nucleus that we can appreciate over here also one important thing that we can see if you look at this diagram it is containing okay i'm just going to enlarge over here there is a nucleus and inside that if you see there is a pseudo nuclear inclusion so this part this is the pseudo nuclear inclusion that we can appreciate over here and why it is called as a pseudo inclusion because this is not a nuclear inclusion at all it is actually an extension of the cytoplasm the cytoplasm has invaginated inside okay and characteristically if you look at the colloid also it is bubble gum like dark colloid bubble gum like it is dark colloid as we can appreciate in this particular diagram the next important uh, histological feature that i wanted to show you over here is the deep nuclear grooving okay so if you see if you see look at this nucleus there is a grooving in between okay look at this particular nucleus there is again a grooving like this okay so there are multiple nucleus over here wherein you can see the classical nuclear grooving if you can see over here also a groove is present okay if you look over here also this nearby nucleus also if you can see this one also have a grooving as we can see this one also if you see has a grooving okay so this uh, nuclear grooving it is nothing but it is a folding if you look from top it is a folding of the nuclear membrane okay and this is basically when looked from the top it appears as a deep nuclear grooving or cleft also you can see over here a nuclear grooving is the classical papillary appearance so if you see in this diagram this is the classical papilla or the papillary architecture that i wanted to show you okay so this is the classical papillary architecture and very importantly if you see this papillary architecture is containing in the center this fibrovascular core there is a classical fibrovascular core okay and these papillas are also containing sometimes small follicles okay can you see the follicles of cell so small follicles are often contained within the uh, particular papillae as well okay now this is another diagram wherein we can see this is another papillae and over here we can see the fibrovascular core along with that we can see an area over here wherein there is a calcification can anyone tell me what is this calcification this is the classical samoma body which is nothing but lamellated calcified structure that we see over here and it is an example of dystrophic calcification that we see good morning and welcome back myself dr jibran amar presents to simply pathology and today we are back with a important lecture today we are going to discuss thyroid tumors part 1 so whenever a person is presenting with a solitary thyroid nodule there is a risk okay or we have to rule out the possibility of a malignant neoplasm now fortunately majority of the solitary nodules they are either a non neoplastic swelling uh, for example it might represent a dominant nodule in a case of multi nodular goiter or it presents a benign neoplasm okay for example follicular adenoma now the ratio of benign to malignant neoplasm involving the thyroid is approximately 10 is to 1 that means the benign lesions are 10 times more common as compared to the malignant ones most of the solitary thyroid nodules they are slow growing okay now characteristic of a neoplastic thyroid nodule let us see what is the characteristic okay uh, by which we can say that a solitary thyroid nodule is neoplastic in nature so solitary nodules okay or nodules which are present in younger patients and nodules in case of males they are far more likely to be neoplastic 
So if you see a single nodule, a solitary nodule, a nodule in a younger patient and nodules in case of males, they are likely to be neoplastic. If there is any history of radiation treatment or radiation therapy to the head and neck region, it is also associated with an increased risk of thyroid malignancy, especially papillary thyroid carcinoma. If you carry out a thyroid scan or a scintigraphy and if you encounter that the solitary nodule is cold in nature, then it is much more likely to be malignant. Now, functional nodules that take up radioactive iodine, they are actually the hot nodules. They are much more likely to be benign in nature. Mortality from thyroid carcinoma fortunately is quite low, wherein the 5-year survival rate is more than 98% in majority of the tumors. Now, let us classify the thyroid tumors. Now, thyroid tumors can be, you know, broadly classified into number one, papillary thyroid carcinoma. So, around 80 to 85% of the thyroid tumors, they are papillary thyroid carcinoma. Out of them, uh, we can divide it further into conventional papillary thyroid carcinoma, which is having, uh, you know, which, which is uh, the more common variety and the encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma, okay, which is having a better prognosis, which has a better prognosis. The second important type of carcinoma is your follicular carcinoma of the thyroid, which is comprising 10 to 15 percent of the follicular carcinomas. Then we have the poorly differentiated uh, thyroid carcinomas, okay, uh, and anaplastic or undifferentiated variety of uh, thyroid carcinomas, which together represent less than 5% of the thyroid carcinomas. And lastly, we are having the medullary carcinoma of the thyroid, which is comprising 5% of the thyroid tumors. Now, most of the thyroid carcinomas, if you see, they are derived from the thyroid follicular epithelium except the medullary carcinoma which is derived from the parafollicular C cells which is a very important MCQ. And most of these tumors, okay, most of these tumors that we are looking at, they are well differentiated lesions, okay, they are well differentiated lesions. That means most of them, they are either papillary or follicular wherein we can understand that what is the nature of the lesion. There are three important precursor lesions of thyroid follicular or thyroid carcinoma okay let us try and see what are the precursor lesions for example papillary microcarcinoma it is thought to be a precursor lesion for conventional variety of papillary thyroid carcinoma very important similarly similarly nif tp nif tp what is nif tp it stands for non-invasive follicular neoplasm with papillary like nuclear features Okay, it is acting as a precursor for invasive encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma. That is this one that we have already seen. So the microcarcinoma is a precursor to the conventional variety of papillary thyroid carcinoma. Whereas the NIF-TP, it is a precursor to the encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma. Okay. Now, thirdly, the follicular adenoma, okay, they might also be a precursor to follicular carcinoma, not in all the cases, but in few cases, especially the ones which are non-functioning, the ones which are non-functioning. Non-functioning means these adenomas, they do not produce any hormones. So these are not the hot nodules. So the follicular adenomas, the non-functioning ones, okay, a few subset of that might act as a precursor to follicular carcinoma. So what are the precursor lesions of uh, your thyroid carcinomas? Papillary microcarcinoma for conventional papillary thyroid carcinoma. NIF-TP for encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma. And non-functioning follicular adenoma acting as a precursor to the follicular carcinoma. Most of the poorly differentiated and your uh, anaplastic or undifferentiated thyroid carcinomas, they are thought to arise from well differentiated either papillary or follicular carcinomas via additional mutations. Okay, Now, both poorly differentiated and your undifferentiated or anaplastic carcinoma as well as your medullary carcinomas, these are aggressive neoplasms and they contribute towards as a major cause of mortality from thyroid carcinoma. Now, let us discuss the molecular pathogenesis of thyroid tumors. So, uh, before we go into the details of the molecular pathogenesis, let me just show you this particular diagram, okay, so that I can first make you understand the basics. 
so this pathway that you can appreciate over here this pathway okay that you can appreciate in this diagram as i am showing you this is a normal pathway of growth and differentiation that we can appreciate in this diagram okay so normally what happens that one growth factor will come and attach to this receptor tyrosine kinase they will activate the ras system over here and over here the downstream growth pathways okay the map kinase pathway and the pi3kkt pathway will be stimulated and ultimately there will be cell growth proliferation and differentiation now i want to remind you that this process of cell growth proliferation and differentiation it is a normal process but normally it is a regulated process regulated means that this process is only going to uh, you know uh, this process is only going to take place whenever there is a requirement of growth whenever the growth factors are present then only this uh, process is going to take place but in case of cancers what happens that this process becomes autonomous okay without any presence or without any growth factors okay this pathway is going to occur unregulated so over here let us try and understand the papillary thyroid carcinoma uh, let us try and understand the thyroid carcinomas over here so for example there are different kinds of tumors are having different kinds of mutations at different uh, levels of the signaling pathway so for example first if we consider the papillary thyroid carcinoma okay so at the level of papillary thyroid carcinoma the mutation can occur at the level of the receptor so this is your receptor tyrosine kinase okay and over here at this level if there is a translocation that is called as the ret ptc ret ptc translocation okay or you can have a ret ntrk translocation okay so because of this translocation this particular receptor tyrosine kinase will become constitutively active and it is going to stimulate the downstream pathway okay without any presence of growth factor so this red ptc translocation and is uh, very commonly seen in papillary thyroid carcinoma especially the conventional variety of papillary thyroid carcinoma okay now another mutation that is seen in papillary thyroid carcinoma this is number 1 is at the level of this braf or at this particular pathway so the conventional variety of the papillary thyroid carcinoma they show braf like mutation okay braf like ptc in around 50 to 80% of the cases so this is the second place wherein this particular mutation involving the papillary thyroid carcinoma can be present okay so let 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 us understand about this so we are first going to understand the molecular pathogenesis of the conventional papillary thyroid carcinoma so over here two things can occur gene fusions can take place or gain of function mutation of the braf gene can occur so among the gene fusions that we see okay very importantly number 1 we have the red ptc translocation and number 2 we have the red ntrk translocation okay now this red basically is present in the chromosome number 10 you have to understand that out of these two translocation the most common variety is your red ptc translocation coming to the second type of mutation it is the gain of function mutation in the braf oncogene now around 50 to 80% of the conventional papillary thyroid carcinoma is containing this gain of function mutation now wherein there is a valine to glutamate change in codon 600 that is we call it as the braf v600 e mutation and this kind of braf mutation is very common in the tall cell variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma okay so this is all about your uh, Uh, your uh, molecular pathogenesis of papillary thyroid carcinoma now coming over here to the second type of carcinoma that we have that is the follicular carcinoma of the thyroid so let us try and understand the different kinds of mutations which is present in the follicular carcinoma of the thyroid okay so the number one mutation that we see in the follicular carcinoma of the thyroid is the mutation in the ras oncogene now this uh, follicular neoplasm okay follicular neoplasms include follicular adenoma and carcinoma and this is containing the mutations in the ras uh, oncogene not only that this ras mutation is also present in case of nif tp an invasive uh, encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma as well 
okay now these two tumors if you see though they come under the papillary thyroid carcinoma but they are not under the conventional variety they are under the follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma and nif tp is acting as a precursor to the uh, encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma and such mutations are seen in 50% cases of of uh, your um, nif tp and invasive uh, encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma not only that these can also be present in the poorly differentiated variety of thyroid carcinoma as well as anaplastic carcinoma so this is about the ras mutation now another very important mutation which is present in the follicular carcinoma if you see the mutations in the gain of function mutation in the pi3k gene okay so again this pathway is going to be stimulated the pathway of growth and uh, proliferation now another uh, important uh, you know tumor suppressor gene that is called as p10 okay normally the p10 it is inhibiting the pi3k akt pathway that we see over here okay normally it is inhibiting this pathway so in case of follicular neoplasm what happens that there is a loss of function mutation involving the p10 tumor suppressor gene as a result again this pathway goes on unchecked and this kind of mutation is present in the follicular carcinoma along with that it is also present in the poorly differentiated variety of thyroid carcinoma as well as it is present in the anaplastic carcinoma now this is the second type of mutation and uh, that that is present in the follicular neoplasm the third type which is uh, you know highly selective only for the fo follicular carcinoma is the pax8 papar g fusion which is level, uh, which is present at the nuclear level this is present at the nuclear level so let us discuss in details about the uh, molecular alterations present in case of follicular neoplasm so there is number one there is a gain of function mutation in the ras and such gain of function mutation in ras is present in 20 to 40% of follicular adenoma 30 to 50% of follicular carcinoma as well and approximately 50% of uh, nif tps as well as your um, uh, encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinomas also show this kind of mutation second is the translocation 23 that we were speaking about uh, the pax8 papar g fusion it is seen in 20 to 50% of the follicular carcinomas only 10% cases of follicular adenomas and around 1/3 uh, cases of your uh, nif tp and follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinomas as well and thirdly if you see uh, a gain of function mutation in the pi3k ca and loss of function mutation in the p10 tumor suppressor gene okay it is present in 10% cases of follicular carcinomas as well this is the third kind of mutation involving the follicular carcinomas thirdly if you see the poorly differentiated and the undifferentiated or anaplastic variety of thyroid carcinomas there are three recurrent genetic hits which is classically seen over here that is mutations in the tp53 Uh, tumor suppressor gene in the beta catenin gene and in the tert gene tert is a gene which is encoding the enzyme telomerase whose major function is to uh, maintain the chromosomal ends and to prevent the you, you know replicative senescence so the other kind of mutations which are present in the anaplastic or the undifferentiated and the poorly differentiated variety is again some things which are common with the other tumors that is the gain of function mutation in the ras or gain of function mutation in the pic 3 ca or the loss of function mutation in the p10 tumor suppressor gene now this pax8 papar g fusion which is classically only seen in the follicular carcinoma it is not seen over here is not seen over here now the molecular pathogenesis of the medullary carcinoma of the thyroid is far more simple so over here if you see uh, again uh, the medullary carcinoma 70% of the cases they are sporadic in nature whereas around 30% of the cases they are familial so in both these cases the mutation is the same they are involving the ret gene but in case of sporadic uh, there is a sporadic ret mutation whereas in case of familial medullary carcinoma <coughs> there is a germline mutation in the ret onco gene okay and especially they occur as a part of your men syndrome they occur as a part of your men syndrome so although this molecular pathogenesis is quite difficult to understand but it is a very important part and lot of questions are coming from this molecular pathogenesis hope you have understood this part nicely so apart from this molecular part what are the other risk factors uh, for your thyroid carcinomas so we are having environmental factors the major environmental risk factor is exposure to ionizing radiation okay either for example as a part of the treatment or as a part of nuclear accident 
so this particularly exposure especially in the first two decades of life or in the younger age group increases the risk factor for many thyroid carcinomas especially your papillary thyroid carcinomas the second important environmental risk factor is deficiency of dietary iodine it is also associated with a high frequency of follicular lesions okay so with this we have completed in details about the risk factors as well as the molecular pathogenesis of thyroid tumors coming to some of the diagnostic markers of uh, your uh, you know uh, thyroid tumors the number one diagnostic marker is thyroglobulin which is abbreviated as tg which is thyroglobulin now this thyroglobulin it is present in the follicular neoplasms that is in the adenomas and carcinomas papillary thyroid carcinomas and it is present also in the polar differentiated thyroid carcinomas the second one is your calcitonin it is a marker of medullary thyroid carcinoma only then we have the ttf that is the thyroid transcription factor it is present in all the carcinomas of the thyroid except anaplastic carcinoma so it is present in follicular neoplasm papillary thyroid carcinoma poorly differentiated thyroid carcinomas and medullary carcinoma of the thyroid pax8 if you see it is again present in all types of thyroid neoplasms including your anaplastic so it is present in the follicular neoplasm papillary thyroid carcinoma poorly differentiated thyroid carcinoma medullary carcinoma as well as anaplastic or undifferentiated variety of thyroid carcinoma now the uh, um, your neuroendocrine markers like chromogranin synaptophysin neuron specific annulase they are classically present in your medullary thyroid carcinomas also if for example any intrathyroid parathyroid uh, tumor arises it will be present over there and in any kind of paraganglioma also they will come out to be positive so they are basically pointing towards the neuroendocrine origin of the tumor so these are the important diagnostic markers of the different types of thyroid tumors that we have seen now uh, having read about all the basics of the thyroid now we are going to understand the individual tumors today we will complete in details about the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid now here the papillary carcinoma we will not only read about the conventional variety of papillary thyroid carcinoma but we are also going to read about the follicular variant uh, in that we are having two things one is the precursor lesion that is called as the nif tp that we call it as the nif tp which stands for non invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary like nuclear features and the other one is your invasive encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinomas so let us begin so the papillary thyroid carcinomas if you see they are the most common form of thyroid cancer accounting for nearly 85% of the cases now the diagnosis okay of papillary thyroid carcinoma it is based only on the nuclear features even in the absence of papillary architecture so for a long time you are hearing nif tp and for a long time you are hearing the the follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma now why they come under ptc is because even though these tumors have follicular architecture the nuclear features are very much like the papillary thyroid carcinoma so that is why they are kept under ptc so remember for diagnosis or to be grouped uh, uh, under the papillary thyroid tumor just nuclear features of papillary thyroid carcinoma is going to suffice even if papillary architecture is not there it can affect any age group and usually affects uh, individuals with a younger age group compared to the other uh, you know uh, uh, thyroid ca cancers and as like any other thyroid lesion there is a female predominance now it presents with a painless thyroid or neck mass and almost 50% of the cases they present with cervical lymph node metastasis ipsilateral cervical lymph node metastasis now what are the risk factors the previous history of air radiation to the head and neck region or radiation exposure as a result of nuclear accident or atomic bomb or hashimotos thyroiditis okay these all increases the risk of papillary carcinoma now papillary carcinoma if you see it is an indolent or slow growing tumor with an excellent long term prognosis and mostly they are metastasizing via the lymphatic route whereas if you see the follicular carcinomas they are metastasizing via the Uh, uh hematogenous or vascular route so coming to the morphology of papillary thyroid carcinoma so if you look grossly they are infiltrative in nature 
with quite irregular borders and we have a very hard consistency so cut section they will be white to tan in color they will have granular papillary appearance so you can see papilla which is you know projecting out in the cut surface now they are gritty sometimes because of calcification that occurs in the form of samoma bodies and this calcification is basically an example of dystrophic calcification an extensive fibrosis might also be present and often they are cystic in nature they have cystic degeneration now remember as i told you that there there is a precursor lesion to the conventional variety of papillary carcinoma so any conventional papillary carcinoma when the size is less than 1 cm we call it as the papillary microcarcinoma which is acting as a precursor lesion to the conventional papillary carcinoma so this is the gross feature of papillary thyroid carcinoma the conventional variety if you see so you cannot see any ill defined so you cannot see any well defined lesion so the lesion is quite ill defined as you can see so we can also see a whitish solid irregular component over here as we can appreciate in this diagram so ill defined borders are there there are lots of areas of a sclerosis that we can also appreciate over here this part as you can see this is the normal thyroid gland okay but again over here some ill defined areas are present over here okay so the ill defined areas basically that we seen it is a pointed towards a malignancy so this is a solid tumor and the cut section as you can appreciate they are white tan and appearance they are white tan and you can see that they have a very ill defined border as we can appreciate from this particular diagram and there are areas of sclerosis also that we can see in this diagram this is the second gross feature why i wanted to show you now this feature if you see this is the basic tumor that you can appreciate now this small small stuff this is actually called as a papillary appearance this projection that we see this is actually the classical papillary projections that we see or papillary structures that we can see again over here in the cut surface you can see the small small this large papillary small small papillary structures can be appreciated from this cut section now coming to the microscopic features of papillary thyroid carcinomas we have to understand one thing that we can group the microscopic features under three headings one is the cytological features architectural features and we can have the stromal features as well first we are going to see the cytological features wherein we are going to discuss in details about the nuclear features which is the highlight of your papillary thyroid carcinoma so the nucleus if you see they are quite large and they are present in an up and down configuration okay so for example the tumor the, the, the this is the nucleus so one nucleus is like this like this so they are very large they are crowded and in up and down you know projection now the tumors usually cancer tumors they are basically hyperchromatic like this but over here they have a ground glass appearance they have an empty looking appearance like this as we see they have an empty looking appearance in this particular manner okay so this is also called as the orphan any uh, like nucleus i will show you with the help of diagram and this appearance or empty looking appearance it is a result of artifact of tissue processing or formalin fixation now you will also see that there is a nucleus this is a nucleus you will see a nuclear grooving a groove like this will be present now this a groove is basically present because of the deep folding of the nuclear membrane you also have the presence of nuclear pseudo inclusions which are nothing but intranuclear herniation of the cytoplasm and squamous differentiation is also present in approximately 50% of the cases if you look at this particular diagram that you can appreciate here we can see the classical orphan any like uh, nucleus features that we can appreciate over here so you can see the empty looking eyes over here and you can you can compare it over here with the histological diagram so can you appreciate this classical nuclear that is empty looking appearance nuclear feature okay this is a classical feature which is seen in the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid or also called as the ground glass appearance orphan any like nucleus or empty looking nucleus the first important nuclear feature the second very important nuclear feature that we can appreciate it over here as i told you they are crowded okay the nucleus is crowded and they have a characteristic up and down appearance and i can prove that okay how i can prove first of all let us see what is this okay so this this, this is basically your empty empty appearance or orphan any eye look okay then can you see one nucleus is present over here one nucleus is present here one nucleus is present here so this is the classical 
crowded or up and down appearance of this nucleus that we can appreciate over here also one important thing that we can see if you look at this diagram it is containing okay i'm just going to enlarge over here there is a nucleus and inside that if you see there is a pseudo nuclear inclusion so this part this is the pseudo nuclear inclusion that we can appreciate over here and why it is called as a pseudo inclusion because this is not a nuclear inclusion at all it is actually an extension of the cytoplasm the cytoplasm has invaginated inside okay and characteristically if you look at the colloid also it is bubble gum like dark colloid bubble gum like it is dark colloid as we can appreciate in this particular diagram the next important uh, histological feature that i wanted to show you over here is the deep nuclear grooving okay so if you see if you see look at this nucleus there is a grooving in between okay look at this particular nucleus there is again a grooving like this okay so there are multiple nucleus over here wherein you can see the classical nuclear grooving if you can see over here also a groove is present okay if you look over here also this nearby nucleus also if you can see this one also have a grooving as we can see this one also if you see has a grooving okay so this uh, nuclear grooving it is nothing but it is a folding if you look from top it is a folding of the nuclear membrane okay and this is basically when looked from the top it appears as a deep nuclear grooving or cleft also you can see over here a nuclear grooving okay coming to the next important uh, feature over here that sometimes you will might also see squamous metaplasia that means along with the typical papillary appearance you can see this area which is basically resembling like a squamous epithelium this is actually called as a squamous metaplasia and usually this squamous metaplasia doesn't have a cancer like look it has a very bland nuclear morphology this squamous metaplasia so this is all about the nuclear features of Uh, your uh, papillary thyroid carcinoma now we come number 2 to the architectural feature so usually the the tumor is infiltrative in nature what do you mean by infiltrative for example if this is a thyroid gland if this is the tumor okay so they are not confined like this they are infiltrating the thyroid parenchyma okay in some cases in some situations okay they might be circumscribed or encapsulated okay as in the the encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma now architecturally the most striking feature is the arborizing papillae with delicate fibrovascular cores that is present over here okay very important now within this fibrovascular cores you might see follicles also oh it is not that that follicles will not be present in the papillary no follicles are usually present but they are quite elongated or they are irregularly shaped in case of papillary th uh, thyroid carcinoma and you can see the colloid which is very dark staining altered bubble gum colloid that we see over here in this particular case so let me just show you with the help of diagram okay i hope everyone can appreciate this diagram over here okay so this this portion under the low power view this is the classical papillary architecture papillary architecture now over here you can see some small small papillas and structures like this why do you see like this see normally papillary structures is somewhat like this okay now we have done a you know we have taken a section like this or when we take section like this so you will see only round round stuffs on the top in certain sections but this is classically how the papillary structures look like you can also see that over here there is an invasion see this papilla has invaded from this particular part and entered this normal thyroid parenchyma as well okay this is one important structure now the second important thing that you can appreciate over here in this particular diagram as you will see is the classical papillary appearance so if you see in this diagram this is the classical papilla or the papillary architecture that i wanted to show you okay so this is the classical papillary architecture and very importantly if you see this papillary architecture is containing in the center this fibrovascular core there is a classical fibrovascular core okay and these papillas are also containing sometimes small follicles okay can you see the follicles of cell so small follicles are often contained within the uh, particular papillae as well okay now this is another diagram wherein we can see this is another papillae and over here we can see the fibrovascular core 
Along with that, we can see an area over here wherein there is a calcification. Can anyone tell me what is this calcification? This is the classical Samoma body, which is nothing but lamellated calcified structure that we see over here. And it is an example of dystrophic calcification that we see. Okay. okay. So let me just uh, read out the stromal features. And with that, we will complete the morphological features. So the stromal features of uh, the papillary thyroid carcinomas include abundant amount of fibrosis or sclerotic stroma. You will see a lot of calcification and some of that will be lamellated in appearance. These lamellated calcified structures are also called as samoma bodies with our pathognomonic of papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. Okay. So with this, we have completed the morphological features mainly. Now, we are going to discuss certain uh, histological variants of papillary thyroid carcinoma. Now, there are lots of variants and we are not, uh, you know, uh, it is uh, beyond the scope of uh, this lecture to discuss in details about all of these variants. But we will discuss some important variants of papillary thyroid carcinoma. So, for example, there is a tall cell variant which is comprising of tall columnar cell with intensely eosinophilic cytoplasm. It is seen in older people and, and uh, there is an increased uh, association of increased vascular invasion along with cervical and distant metastasis and there is a lot of BRAF mutation also over here and these tumors have a very aggressive behavior. Similarly, we have a diffuse sclerosing variant which is seen in younger patients and over here they have a very prominent papillary uh, growth pattern along with certain uh, solid areas which shows extensive uh, squamous metaplasia. Now there is an extensive and diffuse fibrosis throughout the thyroid gland and there is a very prominent lymphoid infiltrate along with germinal centers. So in the low power you might mistake this uh, lesion as Hashimoto's thyroiditis Hashimoto's thyroiditis and this tumor has a very bad prognosis has a very bad prognosis and then we have the follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma that is we were saying the encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma so over here what is happening that the architecture is not papillary it is completely follicular and along with that you are having the papillary nuclear feature so over here we are having two things. If there is a precursor lesion, we call it as the NIFTP. If there is an invasive lesion, we call it as the encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma. So this is your tall cell variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma wherein you can see the individual tumor cells. If you see, they are tall columnar in nature and they have an intensely eosinophilic cytoplasm. Okay, rest all these are nothing but the papilla wherein you can see the fibrovascular cores. So rest all the features are like the conventional papillary thyroid carcinoma. Now, this is a diffuse sclerosing variant. As I told you, under the low power microscope, you can see multiple collections of multiple collections of lymphoid follicles. And in between areas, if you see, you will see a lot of fibrosis. So you might mistake it as a Hashimoto's. Okay. But if you go for a high power view, you will see that inside the areas of lymphocytic infiltration, you have these areas of squamous metaplasia. And within this squamous metaplasia, what can you see? What are these structures that we appreciate over here? These are nothing but these samoma bodies are typically abundant in these lesions. There is a lot of samoma bodies, okay, over here. And you can see the classical papillary thyroid carcinoma areas as well under the high power view. Thus, this is a diffuse uh, sclerosing variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma having a very worse prognosis. Lastly, we have the follicular variant wherein you can see this is the invasive variety. If you can see, okay, the structures, okay, they have invaded the structure actually. And over here, you can see the follicles in the high power view, which are exactly elongated, okay, or irregularly shaped follicles you can see. But if you see under the high power view, they are having the nuclear features of papillary thyroid carcinoma. You can see the nuclear features of papillary thyroid. This is one follicle actually. But the nuclear features are exactly like that of papillary thyroid carcinoma. And over here, if you see, this is the NIFTP lesion wherein there is no invasion. Okay, Where is, where, wherein there is no invasion at all. Okay, this is the other variant. This is uh, the variant where invasion is not there. So if you look at the immunohistochemistry of papillary thyroid carcinoma, so they are positive for pancytokeratin, thyroglobulin, TTF1, Paxid. So all these markers are positive in case of 
papillary thyroid carcinoma there is also loss of cd56 expression over here and ck19 okay ck19 uh, is used as a marker uh, when the differential diagnosis includes any kind of benign entity so when we want to differentiate the papillary thyroid carcinoma from a benign entity then we uh, use ck19 and ck19 is usually coming positive in case of papillary thyroid carcinoma now lastly we will discuss about the clinical features of papillary thyroid carcinoma so mostly they are presenting as an asymptomatic solitary thyroid nodule or they are presenting as a mass in the cervical lymph node now this doesn't affect the prognosis as much now there is a hoarseness dysphagia cough dyspnea okay all these things these are the pressure symptom that means the tumor has grown in size and it indicates advanced disease now these are basically cold nodules so cold nodules usually they are malignant in nature and they have an excellent prognosis with a 10 year survival rate, uh, uh, rate approximately 95% around 5 to 20% of the papillary thyroid carcinomas after treatment can show local or regional recurrence and 10 to 15% can show distant metastasis as well and uh, uh, papillary microcarcinomas and the nif tps if you see uh, for them lobectomy is enough okay and they have a very very good prognosis even after lobectomy so with this i have completed in details about the papillary thyroid carcinoma and the basics of thyroid tumors hope you have enjoyed and if you have enjoyed please do share and subscribe thank you very much for watching this lecture